Since our UN presentation in February of 1992, our continuing investigation has turned up something quite remarkable. Hard evidence of existing technology, apparently based on the same new physics I outlined at the UN. The technology you're about to see is an extraordinary example of capabilities which must exist if the hyperdimensional physics we've decoded through Sidonia is right. The video we are about to show you was shot by your friendly local neighborhood space agency, NASA, and comes to your courtesy of Don Ratch, an independent investigator who acquired the original footage from the live NASA satellite transmission. Don took the first hard look at what this video actually shows. The sequence begins aboard the Discovery Space Shuttle, rolled over on its side and flying wings forward into the pre-dawn darkness of September 15, 1991. The shuttle is in orbit 355 miles above the Earth, just passing Rangoon, Burma, that brilliant collection of city lights below. Discover Houston, while you're looking at Orion, we're getting a pretty tremendous light show. We're looking at the lightning on the Earth. Yeah, I was looking at that myself, and it uh, looks like we're coming up on sunrise. Ten minutes later, it passes over Surabaya on the island of Java, heading southeast for the coastline of Australia. The shuttle is flying toward dawn at slightly under 18,000 miles per hour. The dotted yellow line on our computer plot marks sunrise on the Earth's surface. Everything to the right of this line is in daylight. Everything to the left is still in night. To orient you, the glowing curved line unevenly dividing the dark upper right portion of your screen from the larger gray tone portion to the lower left is the air glow layer of our atmosphere. It begins about 40 miles above the surface of the Earth and dissipates at an altitude of approximately 60 miles. Don't confuse this glowing line with the actual solid horizon of the planet, indicated on the NASA video by the little electronic registration marker at the upper left. This real horizon is slightly darker, opaque, 40 miles below. That's the actual Earth's surface. Remember, the shuttle's flying 355 miles above that surface, about 300 miles in airless space above the air glow. Now, pay attention to your screen at the top center. You will see a dot of light appear and begin to move from right to left. Watch carefully. The dot will turn hard right in apparent response to a brief flash from the lower left. Three seconds later, two contrails move sharply upward from the lower left. In my opinion, the NASA shuttle video you have just seen is among the most extraordinary pieces of footage in television history. I know that's quite a statement to make about a set of glowing dots that may appear to some more like mere fireflies in orbit and to others like a boring video game at best. But we will demonstrate that those fireflies are in fact visual proof from NASA's own live cameras of some kind of hyperdimensional vehicles performing in Earth orbit, precisely as we predicted in our UN speech. In fact, as we shall show, some of these dots are going fast enough to go from New York to Perth, Australia, a distance of over 12,000 miles in less than four minutes. And what appears to be something shooting at them? Well, we'll get to that. Some of you may have seen parts of this extraordinary NASA footage elsewhere. It's made the rounds of several national television shows. It's also become something of a classic among UFO enthusiasts who see the extraordinary physics and automatically assume we're seeing aliens. From NASA, the official explanation of what you've just seen is that it's anything but aliens or high-performance spacecraft. Under the general category of space debris floating near the shuttle, NASA has identified these fascinating objects as everything from bits of insulation floating out of the shuttle's cargo bay in front of the cameras to chunks of ice from a urine dump on a previous orbit. Here's what real chunks of ice in orbit look like. This is ice separating from the upper stage of a 1960s Apollo mission to the moon. Note the behavior of true bits of ice in weightless orbit. They move in straight lines. They don't make sharp turns, 
and they move at constant speed with no sudden speed ups or decelerations. To dramatize that comparison, look at this split screen. On the left, the NASA shuttle video. On the right, ice from Apollo. Note the difference. Constant motion of the ice, rolling, moving, separating, compared to the hovering behavior of most of the discovery objects that September morning in 1991. Let's take another look at this split screen, but this time with the video replayed at high speed. Using this technique, the radical difference in motion between the ice particles and the objects photographed by the space shuttle is truly evident. This peculiar dynamic behavior of the strange glowing objects distinguishes them from the simple chunks of ice or other debris in orbit. When you see the shuttle video in fast motion, the stunning anomalous movement of these anomalous objects really stands out. When I first saw the shuttle tape, I was overwhelmed. If these are not mere ice flakes or something equally mundane, their existence and their behavior is confirming the fundamentals of our entire hypothesis and 10-year investigation. But to confirm that these are solid objects performing far beyond the current laws of physics, we must somehow determine the distance to these objects. How far from the shuttle and this camera are they? Answer that question, and you have your undeniable proof. Put another way, if we can prove that these objects we are seeing are in the atmosphere, then they have to be at least several hundred miles from the shuttle's camera. To see ice, or other debris at that distance, it would have to be bigger than the shuttle itself. Because the shuttle video is two-dimensional, a flat TV screen, at first there appears to be no way to determine the critical depth of what we're seeing, how many feet or miles or thousands of miles these objects may be in front of the camera lens. To determine actual speeds and velocities and acceleration, we must have this crucial third dimension, distance. Several experts who have seen the shuttle sequence, both inside and outside NASA, say it's impossible to determine the distance of any of the objects from the camera given only the information presented on the video. Here's why they're wrong. The physical horizon of the Earth is the distance reference visible throughout the entire NASA video. The fact that one key glowing object seems to come up over that horizon was to us a vital clue to the possible importance of this fixed reference point in space to solving the entire distance problem from the shuttle. So let's look at our video again in close-up. Pay careful attention to what I call the target object, which now suddenly pops on, then moves smoothly to the left. Its behavior is exactly like something suddenly popping into view by coming over the physical, very opaque horizon of the Earth. Let's take another look at that. If we can prove that that's exactly what we're seeing, then this simple fact, if we can establish that it is a fact, automatically fixes the object's distance in relation to the shuttle as the distance to that horizon and the air glow 40 miles above it. Simple high school geometry, once we know the orbit altitude, automatically determines the distance to this glowing limb. The answer is 1,713 statute miles. Now let's make a second observation. At the peculiar flash, the dot immediately turns hard right and undergoes extreme acceleration, heading upward on our two-dimensional TV screen across the air glow limb. This limb, which we have just established is some 1,700 miles from the space shuttle, physically marks the boundary between the upper atmosphere and airless space. At the precise moment that our object crosses this bright limb, it dims out as if someone was turning down a light. Could there be a physical connection? If the object's brightness is somehow dependent on the atmosphere itself to support its brilliant glow, then physically, on leaving such an atmosphere, the object might indeed behave as we are seeing. 
This second observation, then, is a completely separate piece of evidence, strongly supporting that the glowing object we are seeing is at the physical horizon of the Earth, in the atmosphere, some 1,700 miles from the shuttle's TV camera. If the glowing dot were only debris lit by sunlight, as NASA flatly argues, the object's sudden upward motion must make it brighter because it's flying into growing daylight. Instead, the dot grows dimmer, consistent with a much more distant physical location because the Earth's horizon, 1,700 miles behind the shuttle, is still in total darkness. Does this finally prove that our dot is physically in the atmosphere at the Earth's horizon? Almost, but not quite. The proof came from the Analytical Sciences Corporation in Reading, Massachusetts, courtesy of my colleague and co-investigator on this problem, Dr. Mark Carlotto. You might recall it was Mark's imaging techniques and fractal analysis which has provided the substance of much of the Sidonia investigation. Using state-of-the-art computer technology, taking the NASA video apart literally frame by frame, Mark developed the conclusive evidence complete our case. The proof involves something that so far we haven't talked about. In fact, as far as we know, no one's discussed this in any of the video presentations of the data. If you look carefully at the monitor, you'll see that in the upper right-hand portion of the screen, in that area of space, that dark, dark background, there are glowing things, glowing dots. These dots are stars, light years, literally, beyond the horizon and beyond the Earth itself. Those dots are moving downward because the shuttle is moving toward you in Earth orbit and basically the stars are setting behind the atmosphere of Earth. If we look carefully at those glowing dots, we see that we can match the trails over very long periods of time, 10, 20 minutes, and they do not change direction. At the flash, this peculiar brightening of the, of the television screen that we've been examining now for some time, what we see after the flash is that those star trails continue to move down unchanged. NASA's explanation for the flash is that you're seeing a thruster firing aboard the shuttle. If this were true, the thruster firing would change the attitude of the entire shuttle and therefore the direction of the setting stars. Since this does not occur, this cannot be the explanation for what we've been observing. The other reason the stars are important has to do with what Mark discovered in terms of comparing their brightness to our little dot. What I have here is a little simulation of our object. And what I'm going to do is to move it down behind this simulation of the Earth as it appeared that night in orbit far above our planet. Way out there, some 1,700 miles away, is our space shuttle. If I bring this glowing object down representing starlight, notice what occurs. As the star passes down behind the atmosphere of Earth, it changes brightness, and when it goes behind the solid planet, it disappears entirely, exactly what should occur with something light years distant behind the planet we are living on. However, let's look at what happened when our little dot appeared. It came up from behind the Earth in our current model, moved along the curved horizon, such as this, and when it got to this point after 15 seconds, the flash occurred, it then zoomed sharply upward through the air glow layer and onward into space. Now notice what happens as it goes behind the air glow. What Mark discovered is that like the stars, it brightened and then it dimmed on leaving the Earth's atmosphere. Since starlight is coming from light years farther from the shuttle than the Earth, these two brightness sources add the air glow and the star. By the same reasoning, since our object was brightened as it passed across this air glow layer, the calculations say that this object had to also be at least as far away from the space shuttle as the air glow, therefore fixing its distance in terms of simple physics as 1,700 miles away. Since we have now established beyond any reasonable doubt this fascinating object's distance from the shuttle, the rest is easy, if slightly unbelievable. Our little dot is in fact drifting along at a leisurely pace of some 15 miles per second. That's about 54,000 miles per hour. 
We say it's drifting because when you see our little target object react to that peculiar flash that you're quite familiar with by now, the undisputed star of our update accelerates in less than two seconds to over 200,000 miles per hour. And for those of you who may be wondering how many Gs this little guy experiences when it accelerates in reaction to that flash, its numbers clock out at a cool 14,000 times the Earth's gravitational acceleration. Of course, a 14,000 Gs is roughly equivalent to dropping a 10-story building on top of you. 200,000 miles per hour in less than two seconds, 14,000 Gs. Obviously, nothing in our space technology can even begin to approach numbers like this and have pilots survive. In fact, nothing in our known laws of physics provides for propulsive performances and capabilities such as those we've just observed. But this is well within, in fact, it is implicit in any hyperdimensional technologies capable of literally altering gravity based on the laws of physics we believe we have now carefully decoded in the monuments of Mars and in our ancient artifacts on Earth. So what about that flash and those two streaks? Some UFO enthusiasts claim that what you're seeing are shots from some kind of Star Wars weapon system firing at alien spaceships bent on Earth invasion. I think not. Based on reasoning similar to what we just exhaustively described, we have calculated the actual velocities of these two peculiar streaks of light. They are indeed consistent with a much publicized Star Wars weapon system from the Pentagon called Brilliant Pebbles, essentially a high-tech shotgun burst of thousands of tiny plastic pellets accelerated to about a thousand miles per second by an electromagnetic accelerator called a railgun. If this is true, the flash you're seeing is not light. It's an effect in the camera created by the electromagnetic pulse that accelerates the brilliant pebbles. Quite a weapon, but no match for a vehicle capable of nimbly darting away at over 14,000 Gs, as we've seen. The target, you now see why we've been calling our little glowing dot by this peculiar name, in fact, evades this shot with ease. This and a host of other actions by all the other anomalous dots present in this sequence, which we haven't time to talk about, has led us to this amazing conclusion. That the shuttle cameras that night somehow showed us an active Star Wars weapon system in Earth orbit. And the system is using our own American hyperdimensional technology for target practice. So I don't think we're seeing a battle in outer space at all. But I do think this remarkable video sequence is evidence of a different kind of battle inside NASA. Why did we get to see what we have seen? Our explanation is that someone very highly placed inside the agency wanted us to see this sequence live and arranged for the shuttle to literally beam it to the entire world on live TV that night. A truly extraordinary leak of what has to be the world's most secret military program. This is not just wild odd speculation. There is a document which was uncovered in the 1980s, declassified by the Air Force from the Wright-Patterson Technical Library in Ohio, that in fact reveals in the 1950s, for approximately 10 or 20 years, this nation, all the major aerospace companies were engaged in research on electrogravitic technology. Electrogravitics is basically the control of gravity. In 1958, after a special conference arranged among all these players by the Air Force, all reference to this technology in the open literature disappeared. But underground, quietly, with secret black budgeted money, who knows what by now these people and these processes could have developed. In fact, it's possible that you have just seen what 30 years of monies have procured. We don't know all the facts as yet. But since this video sequence of the space outside the shuttle was beamed live to Earth in September of 1991, all subsequent transmissions from any of the outside shuttle cameras on all recent shuttle flights have electronically been 